Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 6th of April. India has chosen side of peace, disturbed by Bukha killing, says Foreign Minister on Russia-Ukraine war. Sri Lanka's doctors protest against medicine shortage as economic crisis persists. And no decision on Pakistan Prime Minister blocking his own ouster. Supreme Court adjourns hearing till Thursday. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Wednesday asserted that New Delhi is strongly against the Russia-Ukraine conflict and called for an independent investigation into reports of civilian killings in Ukraine's Bukha. J. Shankar told lawmakers in the parliament that the government is working to stabilize economic transactions with Russia amid Western sanctions over the former's invasion of Ukraine. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar said on Wednesday the government is working to stabilize economic transactions with Russia, a day after India condemned killings of civilians in Ukraine's Bukha and called for an independent probe. Speaking about the Ukraine crisis in Parliament, J. Shankar told lawmakers that India has chosen the side of peace, adding that no solution can be arrived at by shedding blood and at the cost of innocent lives. If India has chosen a side, it is the side of peace. And it is for an immediate end to violence. This is our principal stand and it has consistently guided our position in international forums and debates, including in the United Nations. Uh, we strongly condemn the killings which have taken place there. This is an extremely serious matter and we support the call for an independent investigation. Jay Shankar told lawmakers in the parliament that Russia continues to be a critical economic partner and efforts were underway to stabilize economic transactions between India and Russia. Russia is India's main supplier of defense hardware, but overall annual trade is small, averaging about 9 billion US dollars in the past few years, mainly fertilizer and some oil. On Tuesday, India's permanent representative to the United Nations told a meeting of the Security Council that India condemned the killings of civilians in Ukraine's Bukha and called for an independent investigation. Moscow has denied targeting civilians. New Delhi has repeatedly called for an end to violence in Ukraine but has abstained from various UN resolutions on the war as it balances its diplomatic ties with Moscow and the West. Last month, U.S. President Joe Biden said only India among the Quad group of countries was somewhat shaky in acting against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. While the other Quad countries, the United States, Japan and Australia have sanctioned Russian entities or people, India has not imposed sanctions on its biggest supplier of military hardware. And security forces neutralized at least two terrorists during an encounter in Avantipura in India's northern German Kashmir territory on Wednesday. The encounter broke out early in the morning in Thral area started after the militants fired upon security personnel during a joint search operation. The terrorist, identified as Safat Muzaffar Sofi of Ansar Ghazwat ul Hind and Umar Teli of Lashkar e Taiba terror outfit, were involved in many terror crimes, police said. A senior official informed since December 20. 21, around 66 terrorists have been neutralized in anti-terror operations in the Kashmir Valley. कल जब जो ही खबर मिला, तो पुलिस ने आज रेड मारा, और वहाँ पर फायरिंग शुरू हो गया, उसमें एक टूरिस्ट मारा गया, फिर आर्मी को हमलोग बुलाए, और इन कॉन्टर में दोनों टूरिस्ट मारा गया है। Sri Lanka's doctors on Wednesday joined a wave of spontaneous street protest in capital Colombo over the country's worst economic crisis in decades, which has also led to shortage of essential drugs. A minister told the parliament on Wednesday that President Gotabaya Rajpaksa will not resign despite demonstrations. Sri Lanka's doctors held a protest on the streets of Colombo on Wednesday as hospitals faced a shortage of essential drugs because of the country's worst economic crisis in decades. Sri Lankans have been suffering from a crunch in fuel, power, food, drugs and other items for weeks and doctors say the entire health system could collapse. 
Spontaneous street protests by all sections of the society have intensified in recent days to demand the ouster of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa. The president revoked a state of emergency late on Tuesday after dozens of lawmakers walked out of the ruling coalition, leaving his government as a minority in parliament as it struggles to quell protest against the crisis. I will identify it by vital drug science shortage and 189 essential drug science shortage. So we are to face impending health disaster situation. Meanwhile, people associated with hotel industry said their business have been severely hit due to the prevailing situation. President Rajpaksa's various moves, including securing financial support from India and China, have failed to end the shortages. The main reason being is because of uh, the current ongoing power cuts, the, uh, the, the full crisis that we are facing, the, the lack of essential items uh, is a big hit for us. And as a hotel, I mean, actually one hour ago, we did not have power. So uh, we just restored our power back. So uh, these are the main factors that tourists look at, and especially the Indians as well. Uh, we, we have a huge Indian market at this hotel. So uh, we have lost a major market, uh, and in, especially overall in the country as well. It's one of the top five markets. And with this current situation, uh, we have uh, really you know, lost track of uh, these tourists. Rajpaksa dissolved his cabinet on Monday and sought to form a unity government, but the opposition parties rejected the proposal. Highways Minister Fernando told the parliament on Wednesday that the president will not resign despite demonstrations. And Pakistan's Supreme Court resumed hearing on Parliament Proceedings case for fourth consecutive day on Wednesday, where lawyers for Prime Minister Imran Khan began their defence of his bid to block an opposition attempt to oust him. Amid the full-blown constitutional crisis, Pakistanis urge a prompt court decision. Pakistanis on Wednesday urged the nation's Supreme Court to make prompt decision as it continued to hear Prime Minister Imran Khan's legal team defend his bid to block an opposition bid to oust him. A move his critics say was unconstitutional and which has ushered in a new phase of political turmoil. Former cricket star Khan lost his parliamentary majority last week and had been facing a no-confidence vote tabled by a united opposition that he was expected to lose on Sunday. But the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, a member of Khan's party, threw out the motion, ruling it was part of a foreign conspiracy and unconstitutional. Khan then dissolved the Parliament. The the standoff has thrown the country of 220 million people, ruled by the military for extended periods since independence in 1947, into a full-blown constitutional crisis. Meanwhile, with no decision on National Assembly proceedings, the Supreme Court adjourned the hearing till Thursday. And moving on, local journalists in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have expressed concern over rising threats to media persons in the illegally occupied region. Claiming they have been long under pressure, a senior journalist, Abdul Hakim, said that journalists are frequently harassed and attacked by both security agencies and criminals for reporting truth and do not have freedom of speech. He said people in the region have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of the government that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them but they cannot openly highlight this only those who fall in line with the government's versions are safe in the region while others are living constantly under an ever expanding shadow of fear he said uh, so, uh, 
की यह धमकी हमेश रिकॉर्ड का हिस्सा है मैंने एफ आई आर करवाई है And following Taliban takeover, the U.S. froze billions of dollars in assets of Afghanistan's central bank, leading to worsening economic problems and poverty in the war-torn country. Once a popular destination for tourists, today poverty stalks central Afghanistan's Bamiyan province. With beautiful landscape and historical monuments, including giant Buddhas, Bamiyan province in central Afghanistan was once a popular destination for tourists. When the war-torn country was peaceful half century ago, although it enjoys peaceful environment, Bamiyan is among the poorest provinces of Afghanistan. Like other parts of the country, it has been suffering from poverty. اقتصادی ندارم برادر یک کارگر معاف نفر خانه نان خور است. یک روز پیدا میکنیم سه روزی که مخورم خو. این روزی دو سال یک کنیم سه پیدا میکنیم خو. آدمی که روشی خود. The economic crisis accelerated like rest of the country after the Taliban seized power in August last year as the former Western-backed government collapsed and the last U.S. troops withdrew. The United States and other donors cut financial assistance and more than $9 billion in Afghanistan's hard currency assets were frozen. کار دسی خارجیان کچی ریل مصر را کمک کی سی دلته و داسی غاتی غاتی پابریکی جوری کی سی طول وقت دا پارز مون مشکل حالی یا غاتی پابریکی جوری سی داخل دستی پپشو دریجی انجینر و استاز و او دارا کم کاریگر دا پخپر طول According to eight agencies reports more than 22 million Afghans out of some 35 million of the country's population are facing acute food shortages and the war torn country would face humanitarian catastrophe if not assisted last week donor countries pledged 2.44 billion dollars towards the united nations 4.4 billion dollars appeal for humanitarian aid in afghanistan after a high level pledging conference And scores of tourists gathered to witness the celebration of colorful Hindu festival Gangor with fervor in India's Jaipur city on Tuesday. The Gangor festival marks the culmination of 18-day-long special prayers that begin on Holi, the festival of colors, and is majorly celebrated in parts of northwestern India. Tourists from across the globe were among thousands of spectators who gathered on the roads of India's northwestern Jaipur city on Tuesday to witness the colorful concluding procession of the Hindu festival of Gangor. The annual grand procession included performances by folk artists with women dancers balancing brass pitchers on their heads, a band performance, decorated elephants, camels and bullock carts and also dance acts by horses. It is really the, uh, the heartening to see that people of Rajasthan keep this tradition and for hundred, uh, several hundred of years. So I wish that uh, this uh, uh, tradition uh, continues. तो मुझे गंगौर का बारे में पता था लेकिन उसको महसूस करने के लिए उसको साथ में सेलिब्रेट करने के लिए मैं दिल्ली से यहाँ तक आई हूँ. तो यहाँ पे बहुत अच्छा लगा मतलब जो हम सब पोस्टर्स में देखते हैं वो पोस्टर्स ही होते हैं उसके अलावा उसके अंदर उसकी फील उसके अंदर का जो कनेक्ट होता है जैसे आप फील कहते हैं वो तो आपको यहाँ आने के बाद मालूम चलती है द एटीन डे फेस्टिवल ऑनर्स हिंदू गॉडिस गौरी एंड पार्वती एंड स्पेशली सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर मैरिड वेमेन इट इज बिलीव दैट गॉड इज पार्वती वाइफ ऑफ हिंदू गॉड ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्शन शिवा रिटर्न टू हर मेटर्नल होम ड्यूरिंग गंगोर and on the last day shiva brought her back the festival is a grand affair in different provinces of india including rajasthan haryana madhya pradesh and gujarat well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at @sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we'll see you same time tomorrow good night You're watching Tag TV. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.